All right, welcome to Fresno City Toastmasters. I'm your president, Farron Jacobson. Welcome to our guest, Michael, our new member, Kalani, and everyone else, all the other Toastmasters here. Welcome, welcome. We like to kick off every meeting with our mission statement. It's in the bottom left corner of your agenda if you have it. It says we provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. I can personally attest to this. I've been a member of this club for more than three years now, currently serving as a president. Kind of crazy to think about that, but I definitely feel more self-confident and like I've grown personally over the years um, being in this club. We don't have much new business. We weren't able to have our board meeting yesterday. We didn't have enough board members to attend. So we'll hold off on that part. And just for our new members and guests, if you don't already know, I'm sure we're all well aware of Zoom meetings and how they're held. But mm -hmm. in our case in Toastmasters, we like to use our jazz hands for applause instead of actually applauding. And if you need to move about your space, please turn off your camera so it's not a distraction to others and keep yourself muted unless you are speaking. Other than that, I will turn it over to our Toastmaster of the day, Sarah Dawson. One, one more, hold on, Sarah. One yeah. more announcement. Kaylani is official today. Yay. He's official. So welcome to the club. And Kaylani, you got that that step-by-step -step thing to get into Pathways. You, I don't know if you've done that yet, but you got all that in the email. I did get the email. I just haven't done it yet. But thanks, guys. Boom. Boom. Congrats. So just oh, so curious, I curious, is it Kalani or Kaylani? Or uh, Kalani. 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 All right. Short day. Cool. Right. Got Anyways, it. Well, welcome. Yeah, glad you're here. Thank right. you. So, so well, theme of the day is chores. And I, I think I particularly like this one because I just, there were so many things that came up for me over the place where I work. We, um, we provide shelter and housing for women and children and part of their stay, it's free, but they, they're required to do chores. And I also just growing up was re also required to do chores. I'm sure many of you were your parents probably made you do that and I had to do that as well and I, I, I specifically remember because it was always such a pain I'm like, oh man do I have to get up and do this and so just trying to get to that point where it would be fun and I it was at the time when they were still teaching home and ec home economics I think in junior high or I think junior high it was and they said oh make it fun so I tried to make it fun and like long but my mom is you know just like let's just get the work done and get it over with and so I wasn't allowed to have fun or at least that's what it felt like to me and and so so now it's kind of like a pain and to trying to make it more enjoyable now as we go on and then it, it just kind of made me think you know when we're thinking about like Toastmasters when we're learning something new and we're doing it are we thinking of it more as a chore and the because there's two there's two definitions to chores and one is just you know just doing a task and the other is has the uncomfortable side of it so so it's either a routine task usually around the house or an unpleasant but necessary task and so are we considering this an unpleasant but necessary task or is it just something routine that's going to help us grow and we're going to do it joyfully because we get to learn and it also seems like when you do chores around the house it makes things less chaotic if it's I'm not going to show you my room right now because that's a chore. I should probably get done with a joyful heart, <laughs> but, <laughs> but just being able to do that. And as we, as we're learning and growing in Toastmasters, is it, is it with a great attitude or are we doing it with a, like, uh, I need to do this, but it's kind of unpleasant. So I hope you'll have a joyful heart and I will turn it over to Joey, who is our general evaluator for today. Thank you, Sarah. Pull up our Joey. So I'm the general evaluator, uh, general evaluator of the day. It's like the general of the evaluation team. And I will introduce some of our team members. The first one is myself, since Taylor couldn't make it for grammarian or word of the day. And what the grammarian does is we'll grab a word of the day, which is very simple to do. You go on Google and you just Google word of the day. Pretty simple. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the chat for all to see. And what you will challenge yourself to do today is to use the word peruse. It's a verb, and that's how you say it, peruse. Definitions, there looks like there are a couple of them, or two of them, and then kind of a corollary on the first one. To examine or consider with attention and in detail, to study, 
the second of that, the corollary, to look over or through in a casual or cursory manner. And then the second definition is to read, especially to read over in an attentive or leisurely manner. And used in a sentence, Dimitri perused the menu while we waited for the table. So what I will be doing is work listening to those that use the word of the day for you guests and members up to about the last six months there, you don't have to put your money into, we used to call it the fine jar, but we couldn't call it the fine jar anymore. It's the investment in Toastmasters jar. We had to be we're not politically correct, I guess. I don't know what you'd call that, but for those that are six months members or less, then you don't have to put anything in the investment jar. But for those that are, are have been members longer than that, then we have to do that. A little, it's been a little tough over virtually to do that, to be a little bit better at it. Usually we have a little coin thing that we can put stuff in and, and whatnot. So I'll be listening for the word of the day. And typically the grammarian will also listen for like grammar and different things like that. So that's what I'll be doing today for the grammarian. Next on our list on the evaluation team, Taking over for Ty Martinez, I think. Who is that, Heather? You taking over for the awe counter? Yeah, I am the awe counter for the day. Thank you, Joey. Uh, I will be just focusing, listening on what you're saying. I'm listening for those crutch words, things like "ah," uh, um, "mine is," "you yeah, know," so things like that that you know we just don't realize how often we use. So I'll be looking out for that during just this throughout the meeting of the day. And if I catch that, I will um, make a note of that. Um, and essentially that is what I'll be doing today. So just to kind of help catch those for you. And I'll pass it back to Joey. Thank you, Heather. And next on our list is, so Kua, she said she's gonna be a little bit late. Did Storm was gonna take that over? Mine. Oh, Sarah, okay. Go ahead, Sarah. I get to be the timer today. We time things so that we make sure that we stay within our uh, a lot of time frame. If somebody comes and asks us to speak, we don't want to be speaking too much or even too little. So there's usually time frames that we put on things. Speeches are generally five to seven minutes. Oh, I think Farron today is yours is five to seven. So you'll get a generally you get a green light but today. You just get a phone and with a time on it at five o'clock or five minutes, and then I'll show it again at six minutes and then seven minutes when it's supposed to be done. If uh, if whoever joins us for table topics, you get one to two minutes, you'll get a flash at one minute and then one minute and 30 and then two minutes. And that should be your red light to be done and be able to finish our person who is doing the evaluation. That's what it's called. Evaluation is two to three minutes. So you'll also get the two, two and a half and three minutes. Thank you, Joey. Thank you, Sarah. And our Zoom master today is Baron Jacobson. Thank you, Joey. As Zoom Master, I will be spotlighting videos. It depends on what device you're on, but I may be spotlighted right now for everybody. And I upload these videos to YouTube. They are made public. You can go back and watch them. I always send the link in the Toastmasters emails. You can go back and watch you speaking. So whether you're giving a speech or an evaluation or just participating in table topics, you can go back and watch yourself and see what kind of quirks you have, what you do. I know I like to watch my facial expressions because I make these crazy facial expressions and I also have crazy hand gestures. So I try to tone those down after I watch myself back. So it's just a good tip for uh, recording things on video. That way you can look at yourself and see where you can improve. Thank back you, Farron. Thank you, Farron. And then one of the other roles we have, I know we, caught, we have a, a guest or a second time guest or so, is our evaluator of our speech. Do we have, didn't look like Denise is here or Chanel. Do we have somebody to evaluate your speech, Farron? Oh, there's Chanel, boom. I'm here, sorry, I, I was not here for a minute earlier, okay. but I will be evaluating Farron's speech. Can, can you just go over just a little bit of what the evaluator does, Chanel, please? Sure, so obviously our purpose in Toastmasters is to try to improve ourselves as speakers. And so to that end, Every time that one of us gives a speech, we will have somebody evaluate the speech to give us feedback after after the speech has taken place. There's several different areas that we look for. Um, one would be firstly like structure of the speech, organization, 
how well does the speech fit together and make sense as far as coherency. Number two would be hand motions, obviously movement. Is that fitting into the speech? Is it supporting it or is it distracting from it? A third one would be vocal inflection or use of different expressions with your voice or facial expressions. And that's all, there's a lot of them. That's all that's coming to my mind right now. But just in, in general, the idea is to, uh, to give somebody feedback so that they can make improvements and continue to be a better speaker. Cool, thank you, Chanel. Awesome. So that um, is our team. Me, oh, Baron. Really quick, I'm sorry, Chanel. I'm, uh, my role as a speaker is to give the evaluator an evaluation form that pertains to my specific speech. I failed to do that. I'm sorry, Chanel, but I'll just tell you briefly that I'm supposed to be connecting with the audience through humor. So, okay. Go from there. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Chanel is usually pretty good about improvising. So we'll see what she comes up with. I <laughs> think <laughs> at the face. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That's our team. And I will pass the baton back over to our Toastmaster, Miss Sarah Awesome Dawson Cookies. Yay. Thank you so much, Joey. I'm really excited to hear from Farron because no matter what, she always has fantastic speeches and it's just, it. she really does. She's been doing a great job engaging the humor. So our first speaker has been with Fresno City Toastmasters for more than three years and currently serves as club president. She's a pet sitter, pet sitter, yoga teacher, and freelance writer who shares a lot of her life on social media with her speech titled, Three Tips, for using social media mindfully. Welcome, Farron Jacobson. Thank you. I'm actually gonna change the view for myself in one quick second so I can see everybody. All right. Everyone hold up your fist. Now put one finger up if scrolling through social media has ever made you feel sad or bad about yourself. Hold a finger up if social media has contributed to anxiety in some way. Put a finger up if you posted something on social media and then regretted it. Put a finger up if you have spent more than 30 minutes a day on social media consistently. And put a finger up if your social media habits have disrupted your sleep. Now, if you're holding up five fingers like me or even four or three, slap yourself because you need a digital detox. I'm just kidding, don't actually slap. <laughs> <laughs> but this might be your wake up call that you need a hashtag digital detox. There are so many studies that link social media use to depression and anxiety that it gave me some depression and anxiety just reading about all of them. So I'm not going to share the details with you, but let's be real in our day and age. It's really hard to get off of social media completely, especially if you're like me or Joey who uses social media as part of your business, if you get off of the socials, it can be detrimental to your income. So instead of advocating for a complete ban on all of the socials, I'm going to tell you today three tips for using social media mindfully. What sparked this idea? My sister called me out last week. <laughs> I had told you before, I'm planning the solo road trip to the Canadian border and back. I'm going to sleep in my Tesla. I'm going to run as many trails as I can in different state parks, national parks, different cities. I'm going to take myself on a vegan food tour. So I was making a bunch of lists, a packing list, a list of destinations, charging stations, vegan restaurants, trails, everything. But then I realized I was missing a very important list. So I asked my sister for some help. I said, hey, I'm going to give you a list of words that pertain to my trip. Can you come up with a list of clever hashtags that I can use when I post about my social media or my, my solo road trip? And she said, wow, your brain just thinks in social media, doesn't it? And I said, okay, that was a wake up call. Yeah, you're probably right. I need a social media detox. Hashtag digital detox, hashtag first world problems. This brings me to my first tip for using social media mindfully. Number one, post with intention. I do plan to post about my hashtag epic solo road trip, but my focus is going to be more on creating content that is useful to my current community. I have my running community, my vegan friends, and just people who support me no matter what I do. And my two intentions are to inform and inspire. Instead of posting beautiful photos just for some likes and some extra followers, I'm gonna focus on what it takes to 
execute a solo road trip safely as a woman and also different reviews for vegan restaurants that I visit for, you know, hashtag what vegans eat and the best trails that I run in California, Oregon, and Washington for hashtag run epic trails. Tip number two on using social media mindfully is to scroll with intention. Have you ever sat on your recliner surrounded by half a dozen dogs wrapped up in a blanket eating vegan chocolate and you're just scrolling and scrolling and then you look at the time and it's past 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m.? Anyone? Just, just me? Maybe it's just me. Have you ever started crying or became anxious, sad, mad, or upset over a hard-hitting quote that you read on Instagram, a meme, a video, maybe burst out into tears in public? Just, just me again? Okay. 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 Thanks, Denise. Thanks. <laughs> While I was recovering from a breakup, I spent a lot of time scrolling. And when you start to double tap on quotes or memes that resonate with you, then Instagram starts to show you more of these accounts and these posts that just suck you into this bottomless pit of posts that make you feel like crying yourself to sleep, which I have also done on several occasions. Anyone else? Maybe it's just me again. <laughs> now I have stopped scrolling mindlessly. I peruse social media with a specific intention. I maybe go on there just to check where the vegan food trucks are in Fresno tonight and where they're going to be located. Or I get on specifically just to see what my sister and my two favorite cousins are up to. I look at their Instagram stories and then I log off. I don't get on to stalk my ex, I promise. I don't get on to watch silly videos unless I really need a laugh at that moment. I scroll through social just with a specific intention. If the feed is not serving me what I need at that moment, I get off of the app completely, period. This brings me to tip number three for using social media mindfully. Be intentional about who you follow. To ensure that my feed is informational and inspirational, I have unfollowed friends and accounts that annoy me in any kind of way, even slightly. I've unfollowed accounts that don't align with my values. I don't care if I'm friends with them in real life. I don't care if I have liked dozens or hundreds or every single post that they've ever had. I don't care. I don't care. If the next post I see on any account on Instagram makes me feel any kind of anxious, sad, mad, bad about myself, I hit the unfollow or even the block sometimes. I'm like Oprah over here when she was giving out those cards. I'm like, you get an unfollow, you get unfollowed, you get blocked 100% all the way. Now when I scroll, I only see photos and videos and posts of things that inspire me, things that inspire me to do more yoga, to eat well, to run more, to live a healthy lifestyle, both mentally and physically. And I don't care about offending anyone with my unfollows. Most likely they're not even going to know that I unfollowed them. How are they going to know? They're not going to know. Are they going to know? They're not going to know. How are they going to know? They're not going to know. If the last 10 seconds didn't make any sense to you, then you, my friend, probably don't need a social media detox as much as I do. And if you do know what I'm talking about, you need it. <laughs> the point is I care about my time on social media. I care about my resulting thoughts and feelings. All those other accounts, they can post for their followers, their communities, but I have the option, the choice, the ability to unfollow, period. Fellow Toastmasters, I invite you to use my very honest examples to remember these three tips for using social media mindfully. Post with intention, scroll with intention, and follow or unfollow with intention. Now take that hand, those five fingers, four fingers, three fingers, whatever you have. Don't slap yourself into a hashtag digital detox. Instead, pat yourself on the back. It's going to be okay. Hashtag Hakuna Matata, hashtag it means no worries. I had to unmute. That was fantastic, Karen. <laughs> I think you were talking to me. And Sarah, you want to, you got it? Oh, maybe. Where'd I go? Oh, there I am. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. I, I was over here and then I got put over here. So. Um, I think, oh, I just get to introduce somebody else, huh? Toastmaster. Oh, Heather, you get to do Toastmaster or the table topics again. 
Thank so Farron, awesome job. Thank you. I was trying to do the timer and then I forgot. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm also supposed to be Toastmaster. So, so to do roles, I'm going to pass it over to Table Topics and Heather will explain everything that we're supposed to do. And I hope you'll all participate because it's fun. Thank you, Sarah. So as Sarah said, I am the Table Topic Master today. Essentially what that is, I have some questions for you relating to the uh, theme today, which is chore. So I've got three different fun questions and you can answer at any time. Uh, if no one starts to volunteer, I will pick on you. So be ready. Okay, so the three questions are this. Number one, growing up, what was your least favorite chore to do? Number two, do you have any memorable oddball chores that parents made you do? And number three, chores never go away no matter how old you are. So as an adult, how do you stay motivated to finish those much needed chores? And I'll just go ahead and answer number three and just say wine has made chores so much more fun <laughs> and easier to get through. Um, that and then also funny enough i remember my dad having a big old pile of dirt in the front yard uh he just needed a bunch of dirt to kind of level it out and i remember him creating my friends and just digging dirt for days all through the backyard and I, I don't know why but that just always stuck out to me as one of those weird chores that parents make you do so does anyone want to volunteer Oh, Denise. Okay. When you read your number two, I immediately had a memory. It was summer, maybe 1975. I won't say how old I am, barely an infant. <laughs> My sister and I were tasked with taking all of this lava rock that my dad had used for decor around these two hideous yucca trees. So if you guys know what a yucca plant is, uh, they're like the poor man's palm tree. <laughs> uh, no offense if you guys like yucca plants, but, and then to make it even more appealing, the, the circle immediately around the yucca was red lava and then around that was white lava rock so i think you guys probably seen that motif somewhere in the desert well my mom got tired of it and told my dad she wanted the lava rock gone and wanted to put something new there so for it what felt like an entire summer my sister and i two young girls dug scooped up lava rock, put it in a wheelbarrow, and then we wheeled that to the canal that was not right behind us, but like a street and a half behind us where uh, TGI Fridays is now, kind of in that area. I don't know how many trips it took us, but uh, I will. we will never forget it. We still talk about it to this day. I was recently, well, not recently, but a year and a half ago, I was in Vegas. And there was an old hotel in Vegas called Yucca. I didn't know that. So it was this uh, retro magnet and keychain. And so naturally I had to get one for myself and my sister so that we could commemorate it. But uh, yeah, that's my memory. <laughs> oh, I love that. I'm glad I'm not the only one that has this weird, <laughs> you know, plans, dirt, um, those chores that parents just come up with, I swear. <laughs> Uh, anybody else, Joey? Yeah, so I have a story. I actually am maybe an oddball myself because I like chores. I actually do like them. There's some I, in the office, the wife's give me the stink eye. There's some things I, I don't want to do, but I don't mind going out and mowing the lawn and doing things like that. And But one story I wanted to talk about, some of you know that I like to read autobiographies and biographies <clears throat> of famous people, whether it's entertainers, sports people, whatnot. And Many of you know, I've read Arnold Schwarzenegger's book, Total Recall, which I highly recommend. And one of the stories in there was interesting. Arnold had a brother who ended up passing away in an auto accident. I think when Arnold was over here, he'd been over here for a few years, I guess. And the difference between the brothers was very distinct. You had one brother, Arnold, who was very physical and like bodybuilding and all these different things. And the other brother was more of a white collar on the computer type before computers or computers, but that type of person. And 
uh, before dinner, the, hold on one second. We got drums going on in the other room. Before breakfast, dad, Arnold's dad and his brother's dad would make both of them do a hundred push-ups or 50 push-ups, 50 crunch it or 50 sit-ups and all these different exercises before. And every time in order to have their breakfast every morning, every morning. And at the time the boys didn't like it, but Arnold would do it because he liked the exercise and Arnold looking back on it in retrospect, he loved that because what his dad was teaching him at the time was discipline. You do this to get this. And looking back, he talks about how discipline breeds self-discipline later in life. So it really helped him later in life to, to carry on and do the things that he wanted to do as long as he was taking care of the, like he'd have to make a goal, he'd figure out the steps to get there, and then he'd do the reps to do it. And I just thought that was a great thing. And we try and do that with our kids, try and teach them the lesson of, hey, it's not just a chore. It's something that later on, it, and it could morph into something else that you want to do. And you have to do this, 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 and this in order to get that. So that's, it was one of my favorite stories from Total Recall and Arnold Schwarzenegger about chores. Very cool. I'll have to look into that. I'm not super like autobiographical, but I'm always looking for something, something new to read. So I'll have to check that out. Check it out. Okay, what about Awesome Dawson? Do you have any, or Chanel, I saw you went unmuted, so you got saved there. <laughs> Sarah, I saved you. <laughs> I, I'll, answer the, I'll answer the second one as well. One thing about uh, my family, I grew up and my dad is self-employed and he's actually a precision machinist, which the simplest way to explain what that is, is it's somebody who makes like very detailed parts out of different types of metal, like steel and aluminum. And he uh, like sells those parts to companies that then use them on larger machines. So one of the chores that my sisters and I had every week was going down to his shop where he worked and trying to tidy it up or clean it or give it some semblance of, <laughs> of cleanness. And if you've ever been in a machine shop, there are two things that are everywhere. The first one is grease. The second one is metal shavings and metal chips everywhere. So we would go every week and we would sweep up all of the, the shavings on the floor. We would clean the grease out of his washing basin. We would clean the bathroom. We would try to vacuum inside of his office area, all of these things. And I remember when I was very young, I, it would be frustrating because we would clean it one week and then come back the next week and it was just as dirty, <laughs> just no matter how much we cleaned it, it would always just get dirty again right away. And I would ask, why, you know, why are we doing this? It seems like, do you even notice that these little areas are cleaner? I mean, it, from my perspective, looking around his shop as a child, the whole thing was just dirty. It was one big grease pit. But my dad would tell us, he said, you know, when you guys come in once a week and you and you clean up some things and make it look a little brighter, that brightens my day because I notice it. And so even though from my perspective, it, it might've seemed like a pointless exercise <laughs> for him, I think it gave him encouragement to know that somebody was, was there trying to help. I love that. Great story. And it just goes to show how much like people don't necessarily say or share like what you've done and um, just that kindness goes a long way, which is pretty awesome. Aww. Okay, Sarah, you can't get out of it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Heather. I was trying to think of, of chores that were maybe a little bit different or a little bit weird and I, I would have to guess that most people, even though we live here in Fresno, probably don't get to do farming chores. Uh, my grandfather lived on a farm and we got to go participate in some of those. He had a, a vineyard and we eventually, when I was in college, my parents bought it out after my grandfather died. So we had had a vineyard for many, many years until a couple of years ago. And I think one of the kind of fun things about doing the chores was going out and picking up stumps. So every January, I don't know if you know the process of how it is, but after the vine has been harvested in October, November, then all the leaves kind of fall off eventually. And then um, they have to 
go through and they take off all the dead wood and throw it into the middle of the aisle and then they go and they chop off all the extra vines that aren't necessary so they prune it down to make sure that it can grow and and have a healthy have a healthy life and so we would go through and then it was really a lot of fun because you'd have a row of a whole bunch of stumps in the middle and you'd have to go and you throw it into the back of the trailer so you'd have a tractor and a trailer in one row and then you were in another row and you toss it over the tops of the vines to try and see if you could get it in and sometimes you make it sometimes you didn't it bounce off the sides of the bins and come back out onto the floor and you have to run behind and pick it up and so it was kind of just a fun time and fun thing to go do every year so that was a weird different tour that most people probably don't have to do why don't you play basketball, Sarah? Oh, because I, I, I hit all the time. I missed. Right? <laughs> That's why I tell. <laughs> There's actually another story to why I don't play basketball, but I can tell that another time. <laughs> Sounds like a speech. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for sharing that, Sarah. Definitely. I didn't think of that either. Um, we are in a farming um, culture, right? Like the, the center of the agriculture, really, here in Central California. Okay, well, I know we've got Farron and we have Keilani and Michael, I know you're a guest too, you don't feel like you have to, but if any of you want, oh, and Kua too, if one of you four would like to, no pressure. I, so I would, um, I choose number three, I, I, I was currently living by myself and then I feel like there's not so much a motivation like to clean or do chores, it's more of like, if you don't do it, no one would do it because you are the one responsible now, you know? Like before your parent would be like, you need to clean, we'll tell you what to do. But now you have to, I think I have the mindset that you are in the dark and now it's time to clean, even though you don't want to. So you just have to, I guess kind of say, force yourself to do it. If you don't then, you know, your place would like become a mess and then it's just gonna pile up and there'll be more chores for you to do it. So I, the sooner you do it, the better, um, the less that you will get to do it, I guess. <laughs> So yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. The hard part is just making yourself do it because I'm good. <laughs> Thank yes. you for sharing, Kua. Okay, Thank I you. think we have a few more minutes for like maybe one more. Yeah, we're, we're good. We can get everybody because we oh. only have one evaluation today. Oh, okay. So I guess no one can get out of it. I mean, you don't have to. Everybody but yes. But so Michael, yeah. Michael, you got to. Yeah. I'm, Keilani, you unmuted. Would you like to share? Yeah. Let's go for it. So I will do number one. Growing up, what was your least favorite chore to do? My least favorite chore would hands down be laundry. Um, despised it with every ounce of my being. And I can say with confidence that absolutely nothing has changed. <laughs> so it's actually funny that we're talking about this because last week I'd sat down and really thought about like why I despise laundry so much. And what it was when I was doing it was I would do laundry and obviously I'm trained to the point where you don't like wrinkles. So as soon as your laundry is fresh out the dryer, you fold it, you hang it up, you go about your day. However, I would peruse my closet and realize that things would be hung up out of order or would notice that my shelves could do a little more tidying up so then that 30 minute task would then turn into an hour and then an hour and a half and then two hours and I ended up with more laundry than I started with. So it is not a, it's not a healthy habit. Mindset has not changed. But now that I do have a family, I am doing it with my three-year-old and he loves it to the point where it gets upset that if I do laundry without him in it, there he's he's not having it. So I don't know what I did to instill that, but I think I'm doing something right. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Laundry is never ending. Never, never ending. Never. Right when you think you have it all, it's like, oh, I miss the socks. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Farron, did you want to share? Sure, I can go. It's kind of a combination between the first question and the third one. When I was little, my least favorite chore was picking up dog poop. My parents were like, you're the one who wanted a dog. You got to go clean up after her in the backyard. And I just hated it because I would always put it off. So then there's just tons of piles of dog poop and it's a stinky, smelly task. And 
it sucked. But now I'm a pet sitter and I literally pick up dog poop three times a day in my own backyard. And then if I'm walking a dog and it poops, then I have to clean up that too. So I literally get paid to pick up dog poop, which was my least favorite chore when I was little. I had nine dogs here over the weekend at one point, nine dogs. That's nine piles of poop twice a day at least <laughs> because of they, they just go right after they eat. So that is my least favorite chore. It's still kind of my least favorite chore. I just do it now because I get paid for it and I need to keep my house tidy. But the way that I deal with it is I distract myself by listening to a podcast or an audio book or something. I just have my headphones on, my cell phone in my back pocket go outside, get all the chores done. Not only am I picking up dog poop back there, but I'm also sweeping, filling in any holes that the dogs happen to dig, watering plants, things like that. So as long as I have something in my ears distracting me, I don't mind doing the chores. Thank you, Farron. Now, Michael, you don't have to, but I do wanna to offer to you if you'd like to uh, take part of the table topic. If not, that's no problem. Uh, sure, I think, uh... One of the chores that I hated doing the most growing up was uh, washing walls. Me and my sisters, we had, we had to wash walls. So um, looking back on it, I can understand it now. You know, we used to draw on walls and stuff. Uh, <laughs> it didn't make sense during the time, but uh, that's mine. Love it. Thank it's you. funny you mentioned that. I just bought some um, magic erasers and I'm about to introduce them to my three-year-old next week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They love it. I don't know what it is about kids and wanting to draw on the walls or and touching say, the walls with everything, everything. Oh, and they would smear, you know, smearing the food on the walls and the whole thing. I always say that it's either you, if you give a kid a choice of between a nice, soft, nerf plush ball and an active live hand grenade. So you give them that option. They'll go for the live hand, hand grenade every time. Oh, yeah. Well, that was my, when my daughters were smaller. Um, I actually let them draw on the wall. My one daughter, she was just had permission to write on her walls in her bedroom only. It became one of the fondest memories that she has. And her friends mention it all the time. And it gave me coolest mom rankings. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely can't say much. I actually wrote on my walls too, but with oh. permission. <laughs> but that was table topic. So thank you so much for everybody participating, guests included. And I will pass it back to Joey. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yep. Joey. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Great, great topics. Great sharing with everybody. Thank you so much for doing that. And at this time, I will bring up our evaluator, Chanel West. Oh, she's evaluating Farron Jacobson's speech. Thank you. Farron, awesome speech today. I, I think that you are definitely becoming the measure in our club of speeches to attain to because the speeches that you've given so far in the humorous pathway have been really good, really engaging. I can tell that you're well planned out. I, so firstly, I, I loved how you opened your speech with something that immediately engaged the audience by forcing them to participate. Very creative, very effective, and also um, about a topic that I think we can all relate to on some level. I know that I can't, I got four out of five fingers at least. Maybe it could have been five if I would have thought about it a little bit more. <laughs> and I also think that you, in this speech and in your past ones, that you're doing a really good job of being willing to make yourself vulnerable and poke fun at yourself, which is really the heart of humor as all comedians know, you have to be able to poke fun at yourself uh, in order to get the audience to laugh. And I love your your willingness to do that. Your speech was was well organized, your points were, were clear and good to follow. I, I think the possibly the one area that um, that it that you could maybe grow in or try to improve is use of firstly like some vocal variety and then also practicing more so the art of the pause or like the, the speed of how you speak so if you're speaking maybe a little bit slower at some points and then if you pause and then if you speed up and get excited 
I think that for you to be able to bring in a little bit more of that kind of dynamic speaking or emotion and, and of course, depending somewhat on the context of the speech, but I think to, for you to be able to bring that in would really uh, just take your speeches to the next level and it would be like, awesome. <laughs> so I, yeah, I think that, that that's the, the points that I would point out, but overall, really good job. Thank you, and I, I totally agree. I was trying to pause, but I know that I tend to speak really fast. <laughs> and you notice she, she, uh, Farron did the two-person thing when she was talking about her friend. She was on this side, and then when Farron was supposed to speak, she came over on this side. Do you see that, Chanel? Uh, yeah, yes. no? I, no, yeah, I, I, I did. I didn't think to write it down though. So. Thank you for pointing that out, Joey. Yeah, that, no, that was a, lot, a lot, of, lot of good stuff in that evaluation. Yeah, Farron, were you doing that on purpose? I did do that on purpose. That yeah. was a Joey tip. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. what I was out. What, um, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I'm just going to be authentic and honest. The speech seemed really well organized. I rewrote that speech three times. The last time was at 1130. 30 yeah. minutes before we started, so. Best yeah. work. It's always the best work. <laughs> right the last minute <laughs> <laughs> great speech great evaluation you two and now we will go into our team see what our how our team did here i'm gonna bring this to gallery view there we go so i want to call up to give a couple of our other members to try and use our word of the day peruse so we're going to go over a counter heather do you want to give us our report Thank you, Joey. Uh, I'm going to peruse down my list of people that uh, had a few awe, which me included. I, I caught myself a couple times. I, I like to say you all did really well this time. Uh, Chanel, I caught like a tisk or so here. Uh, and then Denise, like one so, and Sarah, like one um. And fair and for your speech, you did really well. I caught like one long so, but other than that, like it was, it was great. And I didn't, I didn't catch anything else. I'll be honest, all counter is still a little hard for me to catch everything, but that's what I did catch. And I think overall it was really well. So thank you. Thank you, Heather. And then Sarah was our timer of the day. Sarah, how do we do? After perusing through the different times that were here, there were some that were a little over, some a little under, I think. Kalani was the only one that was right in the zone. And so you were right at Kalani, you were right at 134. Farron, oh, sorry, Farron too. Yeah, Farron was at 124. Denise, 202, and Joey, 202. You actually had it right on the money at two, two and then you added two more words right after that. And went, oh, Joey, <laughs> you know that, it was great. Chanel, you were at 203 for table topics and 214 for your evaluation, right on on the evaluation. Great job. Uh, Kua, you're at 42 seconds. And Michael, first time up, woohoo, even speaking, that's great. 18 seconds. There you go. <laughs> I, I think you're in good company. Like most of us, when we do our first one, it's like super short, 30 seconds or under. And, and you're like, okay, but you did it. <laughs> so awesome job, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, we always seven seconds. Talk. I was seven seconds the first time I spoke. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, some of us come in and it's hard for us to stretch out into that time and then other others of us this guy tend to try and contract and stay inside that amount we tend to try and talk too much some of us so great work thank you sarah for the report and then for the grammarian report you see how i did that make sure that we do the grammarian report at the end so we give two more of our team members some time to be able to use the word so today Correct me if I missed anybody, but I got Farron did it in her speech, which is great because it's right. She already got her speech going. She was able to fit it in. Kalani did it. Heather and Sarah. Did I miss anybody? Did all right. Everybody did all right with the word. Thank you very much. And then I will pass the baton back to myself as a general evaluator. I think the meeting went well. And since I am not the acting president anymore, I think we'll finish on time because Farron's Sorry. much better than I am when it comes to that. But from our speech, Farron's speech, Chanel's evaluation and all our table topics, 
one of the things I love is we get to share our message. And that is one of the biggest reasons of Toastmasters is we all have stories, we all have experiences, and we come from different cultures and different walks of life. And if we don't learn how to get over the fear of public speaking, then those stories never get out. And whether they're sad stories or brave stories or whatever, we want to make sure those stories get out. So we hope that our guests and our brand new members stay with us at least enough to fine tune that so that they can have confidence in telling their stories. So thank you all today for everything you do. And I'm going to pass the baton over to El Presidente or La Presidente, in this case, maybe Farron Jacobson. Hey, my laptop is frozen. So I have to get on my phone. Can you still see me on my laptop? Yep. yep. And can you see me on my phone? I can see on your yeah. phone, but not your laptop. Okay. I don't know what's going on, but we're going to do it this way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry for this little hiccup. First of all, virtual stickers to Joey for taking Grammarian last minute, to Heather for taking on All Counter last minute, and for Sarah for taking on the timer last minute. Great job to everybody. Uh, virtual sticker to myself for the speech. And... I believe that's, oh, and a virtual sticker, st bleh, sticker to Michael for being a guest and participating at his first meeting. That's really awesome. Highly encouraged. And uh, yeah, that's really good start. And let's fill out next week's agenda. All right, May 25th, the meeting theme is National Brothers Day. Who would like to be the Toastmaster? I, I can't be toast, Toastmaster. Okay, that's Chanel, right? Yes. Okay, I can't see you guys, so you're gonna have to say who, who's talking. Um, would anyone like to give a speech? Ty uh, canceled his speech for next week, so we have no speakers. Would anyone like to Did go? he say, did he, I think there was an email. I don't know if that was, he said he maybe wanted to do next week instead. Hmm. Or did he say that he wanted to do- No, a, he was bumping it from next week to- Oh, to a different later. one. Gotcha. Yeah. Any speakers? So we don't have anybody? Nobody. I'd like to be a speaker on the Friendship Day one. It's National Best Friends Day? Yeah. Okay. That's what you do for that. That's June 8th. Yay. What day is it? What day is it? June 8th. Okay. Uh, well, we can go with no speakers. We'll just have a lot of table topics. So who would like to be table topics master? I'll do it. Who was that? Denise. Denise, thank you. A general evaluator? I'll take it. Sarah? Sarah. Grammarian? I'll take it, Heather. Heather, Heather thank you. An awe counter? I'll put myself down for that one. That's my favorite job. Mm -hmm. Timer. You can put me down for that, Perry. Thanks, Jerry. You can put me in somewhere as well. Storm. Storm? Yeah, somewhere. Would Storm. you like to be Zoom master? I can be. Do you want to be Zoom? Do you want to do your speech on the next week? I sh I'll try to do speech. Speech. I'll try to do speech. Yeah, buddy. Okay. Then we need an evaluator for Storm's speech. So I can do, if he's going to do a speech, I'll do Zoom. Okay. Zoom and what, what was the other one I was doing? Um, timer. Timer, yeah. So I'll do those two. Both, okay. And then an evaluator for Storm? I can do that. I was supposed to evaluate his, his speech today, so. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I can do both. All right, we're all filled out for that. And then June 1st, I have speakers, Heather, Kua, and Joey. Is everyone still good for that? I can see Heather. Can you, can you, can you move me over, yes. Farron, to the eighth, please? Okay. We'll Let's have our two that. speakers so we can do our table topics that day too. All right. And then Kua, are you still good to go June 1st? Yes. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Uh, so at least next week is filled out. 
are there any other questions, comments, and concerns from any members, guests? Michael, any questions? This is your second day. No? Good. Kua and Kalani, anything on the, you two are brand new official members. Anything on just being a new member? And uh, no, I'm just not gonna think of. Okay. Uh, I think I'm just like a little confused. I'm still not getting a hand on it, but uh, I'm watching you guys and trying to learn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> trying to understand. Okay, just Hello, understand Pam. how things flow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think it takes a while. Yeah, Farron, I think both Farron and I both have the similar experiences when we first joined. We pretty much sat in the back and watched for a few meetings. And maybe every, I see Sarah sh shaking her head, where you just kind of get a sense and a feel of how everything flows. And then you start jumping in on different roles and say, hey, I'll be timer, which is a, a more of a easy role. And then you start to get your, you get dip the big toe in and then finally the whole foot's in and then the knee. And then now we're waist deep in the water and finally you're ready to go, right? So take your time and you figure it out. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome, anyone else? All right, well, we'll see you guys next Tuesday. I'll send out the emails and have a good week. Way to go, everybody. Have a good week. Bye, everyone. Thanks.